But we begin our report with war in Israel and the escalation of that war. Despite more than two-thirds of the UN General Assembly voting in favor of a ceasefire, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he will not agree to one. That announcement comes as Israeli troops move further into Palestinian territory. The skies above the Gaza Strip were filled with smoke and ash Monday, as they have been for the just over three weeks since Hamas attacked southern Israel. As of Monday evening, Israel's health ministry says more than 1,400 people have been killed in Israel. Palestinian health officials say more than 8,000 have been killed in Gaza. CBS News senior foreign correspondent Charlie Dagada reports. Israeli Defense Forces released new video set to show its tanks and troops pushing deeper into Gaza, saying they struck 600 terror targets in the past 24 hours, and also announcing that an Israeli soldier held hostage in Gaza is back home. Private Yuri Magadish freed during an operation overnight. Her emotional family reunion proved that, despite the risks, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said tonight, the ground incursion is working. The ground action actually creates the possibility, not the certainty, but the possibility of getting our hostages uh, out. Because Hamas will not do it unless they're under pressure. But he earlier condemned as cruel psychological propaganda. Hamas video released today, apparently showing three Israeli women being held captive, one seen fiercely criticizing the government, officials say likely under duress. Today also brought tragic news about 23-year-old Shani Luke. The German-Israeli, one of many young people kidnapped at a music concert, later seen paraded on the back of a Hamas pickup truck. Investigators identified a piece of her skull matching her DNA. The fate of the rest of more than 230 hostages remains in the balance as Israeli troops advance. Video on social media showed an Israeli tank in Gaza City blocking the territory's main north-south highway and apparently opening fire on a vehicle. And yet, even under intense bombardment, Hamas has still managed to fire rockets into Israel today, with one hitting this apartment in Netivolt. This doesn't compare to the level of destruction in Gaza, but the Israeli government says as long as Hamas is capable of launching attacks like this, the fight in Gaza will go on. With Netanyahu declaring tonight that international calls for a ceasefire are a call for Israel to surrender to Hamas, the toll is growing for those trapped inside this bloody conflict. And Charlie Daggett joins me now. Charlie, Israel says the target is Hamas, but remind us again, give us a sense of how difficult that is distinguishing members of Hamas from uh, Palestinian civilians. Yeah, John, we spoke with commanders, former generals who have fought Hamas inside Gaza, not to this scale, but they said that is the, one of the single most difficult things uh, that forces on the ground have got to deal with. It's one of the reasons that they've been dropping these pamphlets for a number of weeks, trying to get civilians to leave those areas where they are invading, especially in Gaza City itself, this congested neighborhood. But more than ambushes or IEDs or even the tunneling system, they said trying to square off against Hamas militants in between you know, 2.3 million people, that sort of population, is difficult trying to keep those numbers down. And yes, we talked about the, the, the high number of civilian casualties when it comes to airstrikes or even tanks for that matter. But when we have uh, troops on the ground fighting street by street and you have civilians that you've got to deal with, they don't really know who these Hamas militants are. There are those who in some cases are uniformed. We saw it in those videos, those uh, in the incursion that happened here. Uh, who will stand and fight, but others who will just mix among the population. And that is one of the most difficult things facing Israeli forces in this ground incursion. And added to that complexity that you just outlined is the question of hostages. And we heard what the prime minister said about how this increased pressure makes the situation uh, better for retrieving those hostages. But what are you hearing about that, how this, this groundwork will uh, affect the process of trying to get those hostages. 
Well, so, John, we spoke with a Mossad agent, in fact, a former Mossad commander who specializes in hostage rescue and retrieval. He said this is the most difficult thing that they have to deal with because in any sort of normal environment, you're trying to figure out the environment that you're dealing with. In most cases, you're trying to negotiate a hostage release. You know, it's it's the last resort if you have to do it by force. And now you're in the middle of an active war zone and there are dangers. Obviously, it's what the military calls a kinetic environment. There's a lot of stuff flying around, a lot of people going to ground. But interestingly, uh, you heard over the weekend there was a cut in communications that may have been intentional. As soon as you cut the command and control center, you've got a number of hostages, a number of people who are responsible for those hostages. Now, as this was explained to us from this Mossad agent, now you're dealing on a case-by-case -case situation. So just take, for instance, that young woman who was released. We don't know many details about it. Um, but it was during a military operation. It suggests that even in the middle of this ground incursion, in the middle of an invasion, releases like that are possible. That's just one of maybe 230 hostages in different situations. But as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, it's in the middle of all of this. It's only under pressure that Hamas will give up those hostages. Charlie Daggett, on the ground force in Tel Aviv. Thank you so much, Charlie.